Hey guys, it's Don here. Welcome to another video from the board. Uh, so, Kevin and I were talking on Slack and we've been sort of thinking about what we can do in different content to bring to you. And I suppose the easiest way to go about increasing our content and adding, you know, some stuff of interest would be to do more reviews. And I thought, what's probably the best keyboard that I could review out of my collection so far? And being my most favorite of, I suppose, all-rounder boards, especially for travel, I thought I would review my Leopold FC660C. So there it is. Um, it's not exactly in stock configuration at the moment because obviously I've put some artisan uh, caps on it, some of the caps that I've made. And what we can see here is that I've replaced the insert and delete keys with some of my created artisans. Both of these are the Sakura cap from Rag Caps. And I've also flipped and replaced the spacebar and the alt keys with also some of the caps that I've made. Obviously, this doesn't actually change any of its functions. It's just purely a cosmetic thing. And I suppose if you had a very keen ear, you might hear some differences because the material is slightly different. So I suppose talking about the technical specifications of the Leopold, first of all, it's a hybrid capacitance top ray switch keyboard. For those who might be new to mechanical keyboards and you're not entirely sure what I'm talking about, these don't have a mechanical switch in the pure sense of a mechanical switch. It uses a inner spring that changes the capacitance field when you depress the switch and that sends the signal through the circuit board. The second fundamental difference is that it uses a different key switch mount, which is the top ray mount, as opposed to the standard MX mount. Now here's a, a keycap that I'd pulled up earlier. And so if we compare an MX stem to a top ray stem, I'm just gonna hold these up. So that is, if that will focus, a MX stem. It's your standard sort of cruciform cross configuration. And an MX switch kind of looks like that with the stem on it, okay? And with the top ray keycap, it has a round and a slot instead. So if I actually lift up the keyboard and see if I can get that to have a look, it kind of looks like that. And there's these two little bars that sit across on the circle, which locks into the keys, uh, into the keycap. So I'm not sure if that will show up very well. No, the, uh, the focus isn't going to be very good for that. But it does actually have an indent on the bottom which helps it lock in. So I'm just going to replace my arrow key. And there it goes. Um, it's a pretty solid board. It's, I think, what most people would consider a 75% board in terms of its size form factor. Of course, it's a little bit smaller than uh, the full-size keyboard. So you can see that my Philco above here is the 100%. We've got the uh, homing block, arrow keys, and the numpad. And obviously on the Leopold being a 75%er, it is just short of that row of the 10 keyless 80% form factor. Um, it's got quite a bit of heft to it. All right, it's a very solid board. You can see sort of the thickness there. Um, as a matter of fact, I've got a ruler here so we can have a squiz. Now, because I'm in Australia, we're gonna operate mostly on uh, metric rather than imperial. And we can see that the thickness of the board is about 25 mil at the back and at the front, we're looking at uh, about 17 mil. And of course, if you include the actual stock keycaps, what you'll end up with is about a 35 mil total height. And of course, there's the uh, USB connector right there. In terms of weight, here's a uh, good old scales, and you can obviously see the reflection of my mic and webcam setup for the moment. Let that come to zero, and let's pop that baby on. We're looking at 685 grams. So it's about, what's that, almost one and a half pounds, thereabouts, roughly, um, if you do your conversion. Okay, so let's just take that away. Features of the board. It has 
rubber feet. It has flip outs so you can uh, increase the actual feet angle. Um, not really going to be able to see that very easily, but it does make a significant difference in terms of the, the actual operating angle of this keyboard. I like angled keyboards, but I actually find the FC660C is perfectly fine without using the feet. Um, it's a comfortable angle to type on without the feet, but at the same time, it's not an uncomfortable angle to type with the feet up. Natural wrist position. Uh, it does have the short shift, short right shift there, okay, compared to a full size 225 keyboard. Uh, if you can sort of see the size there compared to on my Philco there. It does have the arrow keys, which is actually really useful. Um, I have flipped the spacebar obviously there, so that's not really a, a standard feature. And on the back of it, it's also got a series of dip switches there that the camera's not focusing very well on. I am looking forward to getting a new camera at some point, so obviously we can increase the quality of our videos here. Um, the dip switch basically allows you to change the configuration for things like if you want your caps lock and your control to be swapped around and they do actually provide you with the replacement caps so it ends up saying control up here in that uh, keycap and then down here it says caps lock. Um, I don't have this plugged in obviously but when it's plugged in and you do actually use the caps lock function and also the insert function it has red LEDs on this one so that little circle dot will actually light up red. It's got a function layer so there's the function key and I'll just tilt that so it's a little bit easier to see and there is font prints on the default functions. Uh, this is pretty cool because you still maintain your F row along your num row. You do actually have your homing block so your control print screen, scroll lock, pause break and then you've got home and page up, page down there as well. Uh, I did talk about this keyboard quite extensively in a couple of our podcasts over the last couple of weeks. I went to a training course where we had to use laptops for the training course that the company provided and I actually took this guy with me. Uh, we were doing Excel work primarily and I found having the arrow keys was really useful for that obviously and being able to just function around instead of using like a little 13 inch laptop keyboard which you know, with chiclet keys, very short throws, and lots of flex, etc., etc. It's a very solid board. Um, it does, I believe, have a steel plate in it, which adds to its weight factor and why it's so solid. And it's it's quite difficult to move because of those four rubber feet on the bottom. The actual flip-out feet have completely solid rubber blocks on there as well. So even if you have the feet up, <coughs> it just doesn't go anywhere. Can see I'm sort of giving a good tap and it's just not shifting anywhere at all. Um, sound test, you can hear what the default keys sound like right there. There's plenty of videos out there in regards to sound tests already. But I thought I'd just do this little quick review simply because there hasn't been a recent uh, YouTube review on this actual keyboard. I bought this second hand and I don't really know how long the previous user had it for. They did tell me. Uh, it came with the actual purchase receipt, but I just don't remember off the top of my head. It's not something that I, I keep in, in mind. But it came to me and it was in an immaculate condition. I have had no issues with it whatsoever. Pros and cons, I do a lot of numbers for work. I can't use it for work because it's much faster, more efficient to have the numpad there. Um, for travel though, it's excellent. As I've said, I've taken it to a training course before and I've used it. Oh, the camera's wobbling a bit because it's uh, table mounted to my mic stand. And I've also taken this overseas. So I went over to New Zealand for a week to attend a wedding and I brought this guy with me carry on perfect you know it fits into a 60 percent sleeve without an issue whatsoever um, as a matter of fact here's the sleeve that it went into this is uh, one of the one-up sleeves 
Shout out to Pete and Steph. Great product. And uh, yeah, went in as my carry-on. I hauled it around New Zealand. The only downside is that I discovered was I didn't like the way that it sounded on a glass table. So, great response. Nice. There's like a, a almost tactile bump to it before the dome compresses down and, and collapses. Um, and my baby loves it. I, I have a little video of my baby bashing away on it and you know I had to keep her away from the table because she would just reach out and just mash the keyboard extensively. So there's not really much else that uh, I can say. It's a keyboard, but there's no LEDs on it for flashy light effects. I think part of the appeal of it for me is the fact that it does still maintain a relatively professional look because it's got at least on this edition of it, it's the grey keycaps, the PBT keycaps. Um, but I can give it a bit of highlight by changing out some of the caps. I would be more than happy to have this at work. I have actually lent it to a colleague of mine and he's used it several times at work when he was trying to decide on if he wanted to get MX switches or if he wanted to get a top ray board. The only downside is, of course, it does have quite an extensive cost to it. It is a little bit more expensive because it is a Leopold, but it has an excellent build quality. So, I'm pretty much going to conclude with that. Uh, it's, yeah, solid keyboard, um, no complaints. Got a bit of heft, doesn't move around, has a nice sound, and uh, yeah, one of my favorites at the moment. So, thank you very much for watching. Uh, more than happy to receive any of your comments and criticisms. This is actually my sort of first keyboard review after having watched a lot. You know, I, I don't run off a script or anything, which means I'm just stumbling around and have all these thoughts jumbling inside. Let me know what you think. Love your suggestions if you have any on how to improve our reviews and things that you're interested in hearing and knowing about so that we can get you better content, better reviews, better videos in the future. So until next time, as usual, happy clacking.